In this video, I'm going to show how to set up the chin rest, starting with the carry case, which is optional. And I'll do that right now. So the carry case, a Pelican 1606, is uh, made with five latches, three on the front and one on each end here. To open the latch, you push in this button and lift it up like that. And I do that in the, all five latches like that. <clears throat> now this carry case has wheels, and so it's a roll around, which is pretty cool. And it has the um, type handle that can extend as well. So, after pushing in these buttons and lifting up the five latches, you can easily open the lid here. And uh, right here is what you'll see is uh, the chin rest comes with a dust cover and cotton tipped applicator. It's very helpful for um, lid retraction if, when, if you use it right. You just barely touch the lid, upper or lower, just barely touch it with the end of the applicator. And uh, there's also a new uh, alignment target. And this uh, is to help align the camera and the illuminator because the chin rest has a, a chin cup right at the center and this can go in place of the chin cup and it has two eye pictures approximately the standard distance 65 millimeters about two and a half inches interpupillary distance and it also has a target at the front. That's an accessory. These are the three accessories. Then on the top layer is the base and that just looks out. This is an 11 by 14. It can also be made white although I think uh, wood grain is better. It wears better and doesn't hurt the environment as much. Um, also then here on the top is the height adjuster which is this component that goes at the bottom that will go down here and second is the lateral slider and that has a tension adjustment knob right here this white and then after that you take out the whole foam layer like this <coughs> And then the second layer, you'll see uh, the focus track. It fits right in there with the knob going down, just like that. And now then this middle layer of the three layers comes out. And as you can see, it just had this opening for the focusing track in it. And on the bottom is the chin rest itself and that just comes straight up like this. So that is the chin rest there. Now um, I'm going to put these foam layers back where they go. <clears throat> and now at this point, um, since I have this, it's uh, well, I'll show you the new features are these two magic arms have been mounted here and this is their storage position folded up. But this uh, chin rest component goes into the front of the chin rest. <clears throat> we have to zoom in a little here. Um, so the forehead and the chin, chin rest face Outboard, outwards towards the client, and then you slid in here, and then you, you uh, put your thumb and forefinger here to tighten it like so. And just get that nice and snug. And then um, the three XYZ positioner components are right here. So this is the vertical, this is lateral, and this is the focusing track. And with this chin rest you put this on first the, the larger heavier unit and it has an adjustment knob it also has 
uh, arrows to mark the standard reference position uh, where when you keep it there and put the cam camera together then the camera will be right at this 15 and a half inches above the tabletop base. And so I, I slide that all the way in flush and both ends and tighten those. <clears throat> now, um, the 15.5 inches refers to the eye line, uh, the height of the eye here. And um, this is approximately where you want to start off with the client's eye when you are adjusting the chin cup. And it doesn't have to be exact, because this is only going to go to a millimeter or two. And it has a ratchet and a tension adjust here, so it takes a little getting used to. But you adjust that until the client's eye is right there where the black eye line mark is. That's 15.5. And with the, the height adjuster in the standard reference position, when everything is put together, the camera will be right at that height. The lens axis will match that 15.5 inch height. So the second component for positioning is the lateral slider, and that also goes in. And again, uh, it may be shipped with a bit of a tension, but you can choose well, how much sliding tension to have. This unit is the last one, the focusing drag is new and improved, very smooth mechanism. It can go either way, but I like to do it opposite of the previous uh, knob. I can orient the knob on either side. And then after that I tighten over here. And that's all there is. Now, um, again with this one, there is the new feature of these uh, illuminator support arms and they can be put in their down position out of the way until you decide to use them. They it takes a little bit of time to get used to these arms but after a while you'll get the hang of it. And I usually, well I, I put them just like 45 degrees or so like there. <clears throat> and that is the chin rest. The um, alignment target here, this can also go here. I will uh, make a little bit more room here. Well, the way it works is <clears throat> this can replace the chin cup like so. And then it will be showing these two eye pictures to the camera. <clears throat> this is a half inch mounting post here. And that is the new chin rest stored in the optional carry case and or for any type of transportation. Um, the first thing is with the new chin rest there's this uh, storage position for the um, magic arms and um, you you can put them vertical or, or fold it down like this but they should be parallel with the two holes here so that it, it's better to store it that way so it's flat like this and um, these arms uh, do take a little time to get used to and the, the important thing I found is knowing that you can uh, turn this uh, you can turn this s s collar here the sleeve so that it can roll down and then generally most of the time when you're using it it will be in the horizontal position. The, the first arm generally will be in its uh, horizontal position. And the second arm 
will have your magnet um, put at the right angle and what I found it most commonly is I'm putting it right here at uh, 75 degrees and then I'm clamping that up like like that and so normally right before you store it it'll either be in the ready position like that or the other position which is the down position down and out of the way if you're not using the arms you keep them in this uh, I would actually put it at 45 degrees or so like that so right before you put it away you put this up I like to have it so that the knobs are in inwards so let me see if I can show this here All right <clears throat> so in other words And I'll, um, just to, to save space, I'll run this up into its notch. The magnet gets into the notch. And then this get, these two get parallel. And they're parallel to the outer pole. <clears throat> and I have the knob facing to the center of the chin rest like that. <clears throat> That's perfect. And do the same for the other side. Let me see how you can see this best right here, perhaps. Right there. So I loosen this knob and bring it up like so. Then I'm going to slide that into the notch to give it a, the ability to have a 90 degree angle. And then I'll get it parallel like this with the knob on the inside. And then I'll just torque it up. And when you tighten that, it'll hold a lot of weight. It'll be very strong because there's a rosette in there with little grooves at every six degrees. And between that and the ends clamping down with one tight turn, you can get those arms to stay. So that is the storage position. <clears throat> and then um, Generally, just a half a turn of the knob is enough to free it up for at least a piece to slide that out. And at this point, I'll show you the uh, carry case. <clears throat> the carry case has three layers of foam. This is the top one with the three holes in it. And the middle layer has just two rectangles. And the bottom layer, you don't normally take that out. It just looks like uh, the shape of the outline of the chin rest. And it also has this square piece that goes right in the middle. So this is where I'll uh, <coughs> zoom out a little bit. So um, the chin rest is going to go into this shape. And this is the bottom by the wheels. But before you put it in, you put this rectangle down here, you see how that is? And it will go like so. The rectangle of foam goes like so right there. It's kind of like a pillow for the headrest, actually. That's how it goes. And uh, it just fits perfectly right above the two magic arms, right there and up to there. And there's also a little bit of a cutout here for the, uh, that. But once that's in place, then this goes right into the opening for it. <clears throat> now I can tell this to show how it looks. That's what's in. This is how it is. Um, also, it's good to have this about five inches apart. Have the chin cup down around five inches, right around the five mark, five centimeter mark. And now it's ready for the second layer, which is this. And it also has a cutout, a T cutout here. You can see the T cutout matches the forehead rest. Forehead rest goes here. And there's another cutout here for the uh, chin cup. So that will go down like so. All right, mm -hmm. that's what it looks like. Now this big square holds the
the translation stage and to remove that you just loosen this again about a half a turn is good and uh, this is it and you go knob down there's a, a space right there it goes straight down like that and now for the third foam layer that goes right here this is how it looks this time there's the focusing track goes knob down in that um, place and this is for the slider which is next so to take the slider off I just loosen this about a half a turn or so and bring it back here and uh, you can see this unit here <clears throat> and that this goes upside down and you um, fit the clamp. This part is called the lower part of the Arca Swiss. It's called the clamp. The upper one is called the plate. But uh, let me see if I can show this here. Clamp here is up, always up. However, when you store it, it goes down. And so to do that, I put it here. And this one just rests on top here. So that, that's how that goes. And for the third um, XYZ, you loosen this and slide it down. And again, it ought to be stored with the arrows roughly lined up. And in this case, there's also a hole over here for the knob to go in. And uh, you might be able to see that right there. And that means that with this particular case, the scale goes up like that. <clears throat> and then the third piece is the uh, wooden base, and that goes right here. 11 by 14 cut out. Some of them are 10 by 14, this one's 11 by 14. And then, uh, generally, uh, you would want to put your alignment target here, the back in that place. Cut and tipped applicators. And the dust cover, if you're traveling, you may as well bring the dust cover. So that's how that works. And then this shuts, and then you latch it. And that is ready to go. That is the generest in the carry case, ready for shipping. And uh, has handles on both ends in the middle and uh, weighs about uh, 32, 33 pounds with the chin rest. And as I mentioned, it's 28 inches in length, about 12 inches high and 16 inches in depth. It's, uh, it's a good case if you need to travel, but uh, most people don't travel. But if you do, that's a good way to go.